I, when I came to Congress almost 10 years ago, the first thing that happened, and I, Argonne National Laboratory is in my district, was that uh, the, the president cut the EMT, the electrometallurgical uh, program, uh, by $20 million. And I was hysterical that I thought this was in the first month that I was here and I needed to, to get that funding back because I do really do believe in, and have long been an advocate in uh, the uh, recycling, uh, reprocessing of spent nuclear fuel. Well, I did get the money back and the program continued um, uh, to conclusion. Uh, and, and I know that there are different processes, the, the Purex, the Urex, the Urex Plus, uh, uh, some have mixed at um, active actinites and uh, so the cut down on the proliferation but I think the three issues the uh, or the two really the the uh, pure plutonium and the and what to do with with the waste are, are key issues but to me I think we should be moving uh, much much quicker than we are and I, as the when I was the chairman of this of this uh, the energy subcommittee in the 108th and 109th Congress we really worked on uh, GNAP and trying to uh, de develop that there was one sticking point and that was that uh, we asked the Department of Energy to do a comprehensive uh, systems analysis rather than move right to uh, what we thought was commercialization. And there was a, a disconnect there, and I think that, that really, it slowed down the process, but I think we would, uh, would be a lot further along right now if we really had turned to the systems analysis rather than, uh, than trying to th the construction of a commercial uh, scale facility. And the problem was then that the funding uh, was was cut until that systems analysis or trying to, to get that, of which I was not a, a appropriator, so I was not involved in that, but the appropriation committee felt the same way. So I would like to know from um, Admiral Grossman, uh, where are we now as far as, as moving ahead? Uh, you know, Congress, the GAO, and the National Academies, uh, I think, um, would be more accepting of, of, of the, what you're trying to do to close the fuel cycle. And, and I think this is the most important issue that we're facing is, you know, finding alternative energies. And, and it has to be nuclear. I, I guess I come from a state that 50 percent of our electricity is, is nuclear, so we're used to it and really want to see what, what goes on. But I, I just think that we're, we're spinning our wheels again. We're just sitting around waiting and to say, we'll do it in the future. The costs only go up. The, the lack of, of uh, nuclear energy is only going to hurt our country. We see all over the world all these building of nuclear plants that we're sitting and reprocessing plants. That we, I, we have one in Illinois that was built and then shut down by Jimmy Carter. There's five, at least five others that were built at that time. Well, well Congresswoman, I, I, I take your points, and I think they're very good ones. The, um, Reasons to reprocess, are, in my opinion, are twofold. One is to get additional energy out of the uranium that you dug out of the ground. I mean, uranium and the other fissionable natural material, thorium, are limited resources. So if we look ahead, if we say nuclear energy is going to be an important element of our energy portfolio for the next 100, 200 years, um, then, then uh, I think if you put it in that context, then resource utilization, not just the current market price of uranium, is, is an important consideration. In addition to that, the technologies involved in reprocessing at an industrial scale are difficult. Um, you take highly radioactive material and the first thing you do is dissolve it um, in hot nitric acid. Uh, th that being said, uh, resource utilization, the, the other is the, uh, with increased resource utilization comes a waste disposal problem at the end of the cycle that is easier to manage. The waste is less toxic, less radioactive for a long period of time. So those are really the goals of reprocessing and then uh, recycling. And uh, GNEP, of course, has proposed um, a separation of used fuel into its components and, and burning the particularly difficult ones, the long-lasting, highly radioactive ones, in a, uh, a a uh, fast reactor kind of technology. Um, 
the systems analysis that you talk about to support that is is ongoing. It's, I think, frankly, it's limited by the number of uncertainties in in what's it look like uh, at a commercial scale. What are the eco economics going to be? So to move forward, what we what we have to do is we have to uh, both do the research and development if, and if involve I, the industry. Yeah along the way. If I might, though, if we're going to have uh, to deal with the waste, if we mm -hmm. put uh, what the waste that we have now that's already accumulated, we would actually fill Yucca Mountain. Mm -hmm. If we were to uh, be able to do the reprocessing and if we would be able to burn and reburn that waste, that we could have a, a facility that, that would last for a, a, over a century. And I mm -hmm. think we, we just have to, to make up, you know, we can go ahead and build these plants and have more waste, but at some point we're going to have to decide when we can use Yucca Mountain. Yes, ma'am. Those those are the gains that we can reduce the need uh, for a geological repository, reduce the waste burden, the costs of the development of the industrial scale reprocessing technology, the resolution of the uncertainties. The principal uncertainty is, you know, we know at a laboratory scale we can do the kinds of separations we want. We can parse the fuel. Can you do that at an industrial scale? Because it really does change. And then the other is, can you make the fuel that uh, that you want to burn, the particularly uh, what I'll call the bad actors, can you can you make that and can you recycle it effectively? And there's just a lot of, uh, you know, te technology unknowns in that. But the only way to resolve them <laughs> is to do, to do the research and development, involve the industrial components at the right pace, at the right level, because uh, this is not just the business of laboratory scientists, it's the business of, um, of industrial, uh, industrial operators. And then we'll know. Then we'll thank know you, whether Admiral. or not we want to do it. Thank you, Admiral, yeah. and, and thank you, uh, Ms. Biggert. Uh, I'm having to deal with an issue uh, collateral of this. I'm sorry to be coming and going.